Welcome back to the channel. Today we have the seven ways British and American restaurants are very different. Now, one thing about me is I love to eat. <laughs> I love to eat. I love to go out and eat. Uh, definitely just love different foods. So I'm curious to see why the restaurants are so different. You know, I want I want to know what he has to say. With that being said, original link in the description with smoking all my dragons, Devon Righteous Almighty Greats over achieving, never slacking. And we're going to get into this video and find out why American and British restaurants are very different. Here we go. And I'm sure to some degree there'll be places in Britain that sell Chicago style pizza, even though it's nothing like it. Or even in my birthplace of Cleethorpes, Chicago style burgers, whatever that is. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to restaurants. And because food is involved, restaurants happen to be a kind of central hub for where British and American differences play out more broadly. Because we see differences in not just the food, but the terminology that's used and some of the customs that are practiced and the practices that are customed. And of course, the mere concept of a restaurant, I don't know why I'm doing that, the mere concept of a restaurant is universal. But the way that they are presented to and used by Brits and Americans is subtly and sometimes not so subtly different. And so here are seven ways in which British and American restaurants are very different. For Brits moving to or even visiting the United States of America, one of the biggest culture shocks, at least for me, was the kind of round-the-clock attention that servers pay to their customers. What's that? Your glass of water is empty. We can't be having that. American yeah. servers come right on over, minus the whistling sound. Yeah, Americans, they're real big on that, you know, on making sure that your cup is full. Uh, especially if you go to like eight, like Chinese buffets. Oh man, they don't play that. Usually. And in between that and a bite of your broccoli, American wait staff will be over just to simply ask, how's that food tasting? Can I get you anything else? Golly gee, that's a nice accent. Which part of Australia are you from? Those kind of questions. Whereas British wait staff are staff that, you know, wait. Wait to come over until you're all done. And part of this is tied to the notion of tips and tipping. In Britain, contrary to popular belief, servers do make a bulk of their income from tips. But unlike in America, tipping is voluntary and not at all expected. A lot of Brits who come to the United States, myself included, don't know this at first. In oh, it's expected. It is expected. I'll tell you that much. You know, it might not seem like it's not, but it really is. In my case, I even asked the waiter how much I should tip, so I gave her the 75% she recommended and moved on. Of course, with time, I came to learn that the expected amount here in the United States of America is 15 to 20% of your bill and or check will come onto terminology later. The American dream doesn't require a college degree. My glasses do not want to stay on my face, y'all. Like, they literally just keep slipping. I guess, I guess it's time for some new glasses here, man. Four eyes problems. Bench. It's often been noted, especially within the fast food industry, that portion sizes in the United States of America are much larger than their European counterparts. But often, depending on where you go- I feel like that's starting to change. Uh, from re eating out recently a lot, um, it just seems like the portions are definitely starting to get a lot more smaller than before, for sure. So this can also be true of sit-down restaurants. One of the first major American sit-down chain restaurants that I visited was a little place called Applebee's. <laughs> and at the likes of Applebee's... Uh, Applebee's is my favorite. That's why I'm laughing. Applebee's is literally my favorite place to go to, all right? but also the Olive Garden or TGI Friday or any number of other chains. You are Damn, he naming the bangers. He naming them. Okay, okay. Appetizer almost feels like a main course slash entree. Again, mm. terminologies later. And by the time that the actual main course arrives, you eat it merely out of politeness while pretending that this is all fine. And then, this is the really <laughs> funny bit, they ask you if you want to see the dessert menu. And of course you can't say no because you're addicted to cheesecake. And that's always humongous and rich as opposed to humongous and poor, which is what you are when you leave the restaurant. Except that cheap joke doesn't quite work because American food on the whole is actually cheaper compared to the food served in Britain, which is partially how you account for the portion size difference. Now, after a while, I noticed that there were Americans all around me that instead of plowing through this mountain of calories in one sitting, answered yes to what was then an unfamiliar question to me. 
That's right. It's completely yeah. normal in the United States of America to have your food boxed at the end of the meal with the intention of you taking it home and refrigerating it or just eat it later that night if you're feeling lucky. And of course, now that makes sense, right? I mean, you've paid your money for that food. You want to get your money's worth. But on top of that, it cuts down on waste. But at first, just because of what I was used to back home, it seemed weird to be taking leftovers home from a restaurant in Britain, <laughs> as evidenced by this BBC article. Yeah, that's that's big in the US, you know. Uh, expect to, I mean, expect to, to take some food home. You know, that's what that's that's always encouraged out here. Cool. From a few years back, we've historically felt embarrassed even to ask for a box or a doggy bag because we are. I don't know. I haven't a clue why. Actually, either way, I think leftovers are great to the extent that I have Indian food for breakfast. Don't judge me. Buffets, aside from the fact that America seems to be just a tad more into them than Britain, there's an aspect of the buffet going experience that differs greatly between the two countries. Where I was from, depending on the buffet in question, I almost got the impression that it was rude to the kitchen staff to ask for a new plate when you're going up for seconds. In other words, whenever I went for say a Chinese buffet, I would go up, get my plate, scoop on all the food, go back to my table, realize that I am unrelentingly gluttonous and then go back <laughs> up for seconds using the same plate. It made me feel good that while devouring lots of solids, I done a solid to the kitchen staff. Yeah, are very polite in Britain. Yeah, very polite. That's all I gotta say about that. That could be taken so many ways. Whereas once And I love it. I'm polite too. But in America the culture is just different. Like you go to a Chinese buffet out here in America, man, you just you lead a plate. You just go grab a new plate, grab a new plate, like you on your own when it comes to that buffet. Once I moved to the United States, I realized that this was considered either weird or unhygienic. At American buffets, customers are expected to get a new, <laughs> cleaner plate when they go. I'm laughing because like this this video, this clip of him, he just seems it just seems to like he just new. Like somebody who's new to the to the planet, period. He's like, oh, this is this is uh this isn't normal. Am I doing it right? <laughs> for seconds because this is a measure seen at preventing cross-contamination but i have to say after practicing both methods neither has caused me any personal problems but while we're on the subject of chinese food that brings us on to this i think it's fair to say that in both britain and america ethnic food or food that is usually associated with a country that is not this one is extremely popular and to varying degrees, no matter if you're talking about the United States or Britain, the same countries are often represented at the dinner table. Off the top of my head, the big one is Chinese food. Except, you guessed it, British Chinese food and American Chinese food is vastly different. In Britain, Chinese food is often spicy, sometimes curry-based. In the US, on the other hand, Chinese food tends to be centered around standalone fried meats, yep. usually of the chicken variety. Now, these are not entirely absent from Britain, but one way that America differentiates itself is that its Chinese food tends to be a lot sweeter than in Britain. But whichever way you slice it, I planned that, both British and American Chinese cuisine is a modified version of what actual Chinese people eat in yeah. China. And this seems to be a common theme that actually unites Britain and America. Take, for example, Indian food. While it should be pointed out that Indian food is more widely eaten in Britain than in the United States, and that in my experience, certain Indian curries tend to be spicier than their American counterparts, neither is anywhere near as spicy as authentic Indian. On the other hand, in terms of everything I just said there, Almost the exact opposite is true of Mexican food. America, by virtue of its neighborly status with Mexico, eats way more Mexican food than Britain does, even if by all accounts- Yeah, I ain't even gonna lie, the Mexican food out here is, whew, I can't even eat that like that, I'll tell you. It's just off the simple fact that you will gain a lot of weight, you will. Tacos and the like have started to make waves in Britain, but even America's version of Mexican food is often a departure from what's eaten south of the border, with authentic Mexican food often less spicy than Americans are used to. And it was in the restaurants of America that I got a first-hand feel for how America likes to modify the national dishes of other countries to create what amounts to their own version, because they even do this with English cuisine. And that brings us on to this. <laughs> Comforts of home at Town Place Suites. 
Look, I'll cut the malarkey. We're facing a critical fundraiser. <sighs> they going to keep running these politics down our throats. If you were to ask me to name three dishes from both countries, off the top of my head, I would say this. For Britain, fish and chips, Sunday roast, and a full English breakfast. For America, hamburgers, hot dogs, and pizza. And yes, I realize that all of those have disputed or undisputed origins in Germany and Italy, but over time they have become synonymous with the United States. But to a lesser degree, and because of American influence, hamburgers, hot dogs, and pizza can all be found in restaurants in the UK. And I'm sure to some degree there'll be places in Britain that sell Chicago-style pizza <laughs> even though it's nothing like it. Or even in my birthplace of Cleethorpes, Chicago-style burgers, whatever that is. But in reverse, whenever I'm... When you go to certain places in, um, in the States, you'll get New York-style pizza. And I'm from New York. And it don't be nothing like no New York-style pizza like that. America tries to replicate popular British dishes. It's sort of like being in an alternate universe. It's great, but it's different. Very rarely do you get fish and chips where the chips slash fries are thick cut and greasy and the fish is singular and large. Instead, you usually get three or four smaller pieces of fish that are usually a tad saltier than what you'd expect back home. Oh, and did I mention there's no mushy peas? Honestly, it's like being in the south of England. And in terms of the other two, the Sunday roast and the full English breakfast, well, I found those a lot harder to come by in the US than fish and chips. Even at those pubs that, you know, every state has, that purport to be authentically British. And lastly, we can't talk about British versus American restaurant differences without talking about the terminology. You see, it's one thing to get your food boxed at the end of a sit-down meal, but many of us might like to take it home without sitting down in the restaurant in the first place. In Britain, I always knew this as getting takeaway, which is why I was profoundly confused when I worked in an American office environment, and they talked about the key takeaways from the meeting. I thought I was getting curry and chips. In America, this is referred to as takeout or sometimes carry out. And regardless of portion size, we can't even agree on what to call each meal. In the US, for the most part, the meal immediately preceding the main meal is usually known as an appetizer. In Britain, I always refer to this as a starter, but some, as the French do, might call it an entree. And this is where things get confusing, because Americans and Canadians alike use the word entree to mean the main meal. For us, the main meal is usually known as the main course. If it's a Sunday roast, that main course will include a Yorkshire pudding, and this is where things get doubly confusing, because we in Britain also use the word pudding as a catch-all term for dessert. In fairness, we do also interchangeably use the word dessert. In America, the word pudding is more specific, and the catch-all term has been deserted in favour of dessert. And the implement with which we eat this food, i.e. the knife, fork, and spoon, is known collectively in the United States as silverware, whereas this word, when used in Britain, would pertain more to ornate metal plates, or perhaps metallic jugs, or sports trophies. A lot of the time, instead, we'll collectively refer to knives, forks, and spoons as cutlery. And as we all know, it's very rude to leave a restaurant without paying. And this is why we ask for the bill, or at least we do in Britain. Because most of the time, here in the US, Americans will ask for the check. And that's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below if you've been to restaurants in both countries and what some of your observations were. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. And a big Applebee's portion-sized shout-out to my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to support Lost in the Pond, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until the next video, goodbye. Okay, these glasses, I don't know what's going on. Could not keep these things on. But, yeah, overall, um, safe to say we like to grub in the U.S. and, uh, we just, our portions are pretty big. Like I said, lately I've been seeing a lot smaller portions. Uh, I mean, I tend to ask for, as far as what he said about the lingo, I say bill or check. So, I mean, just depending on how I feel that day, I guess. So, I don't really see a big difference there. But uh, as far as how he said, we call it, um, what did he say? He said like something ornaments or, what did he say? Cutlery. And yeah, that's different. That's different, you know. Then uh, starter makes sense as far as, you know, appetizer, starter, starter. It makes sense. I ain't mad at that. But overall, man, you know, if you haven't been to America, yeah, come through. You know, we eat. We definitely eat too much, probably.
for sure. <laughs> but with that being said, original link will be in the description. <laughs> let me know what you think about this video. And if you've been to both, uh, let me know. What do you prefer? Do you prefer British restaurants or do you prefer American restaurants? Original link in the description. And I'll be looking forward to those comments. Much love.